Hey Team Bio, welcome to your screencast on, it's really a review of population growth models and a little more in-depth look uh, at how populations change and grow over time. Uh, okay, we've actually looked at these two graphs before. When we were talking about evolution, um, we gave this uh, model the name exponential growth. And this model is called logistic growth. Um, okay, exponential growth. This type of growth, if we have on the x-axis time and on the y-axis population size, you can see that the population is growing, but as time goes on, the population starts to grow faster and faster and faster and faster. So it starts out small with a just a few reproductive individuals, but as we add more organisms to the overall population, uh, there's more reproductive potential and uh, there's just more organisms there to have uh, offspring. And so the population starts to grow faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, we talked about how this model is not actually a good uh, or realistic model for long-term growth. Even the smallest organisms on Earth, bacteria, can't grow exponentially forever because they'll run out of resources and space. Uh, we talked about logistic growth as being a more accurate model for population sizes where um, all creatures eventually reach their carrying capacity. I'm going to draw that as a dotted line here. So this dotted line represents a variable that we call k. k is equal to the carrying capacity. And the carrying capacity is the number of individuals that the environment can support. So logistic growth is a more reasonable long-term model for how populations will grow. Initially, they start out growing slowly, uh, like exponential growth. The, the first phase, I guess the first half of lo um, logistic growth kind of mirrors exponential growth. Uh, population is growing slowly and then more and more rapidly over time, but then it hits an inflection point somewhere in the middle. It starts to grow more and more slowly. Um, okay, we're going to talk about, we're going to do a little math. Uh, Maybe not your favorite thing, but we're going to get through it together. Okay, exponential growth. Um, exponential growth, the slope of this curve, the rate, the growth rate of this population can be given to us by the equation G equals R times N, where G is equal to the growth rate. N is equal to the population size. And R, whoops, R is equal to the per capita rate of increase. The per capita rate of increase is actually, it's equal to the number of births in the population minus the number of deaths in the population divided by the total population size. Okay, let me give you a little of exa example of how we can use this equation to predict um, the, how a population will grow under this exponential growth model. Okay, so let's imagine, let's just take a point here. This is this point where the population size, the total population size is equal to 100. So N here, our population size is equal to 100 individuals. Now imagine a situation where we had 50 births and 20 deaths. And we can calculate the total per capita rate of increase, or R, dividing th that by the total number of individuals in our population, which is 100 individuals. So 
50 minus 20 is 30 divided by 100 is equal to 0.3. So this is equal to our r here. Now, we can use this equation, 0.3, which is our r, times 100, which is our n, to give us our growth rate, which is g. We find, when we do the math out, that this is equal to 30. g is equal to 30. And if you look at the next time point here, you can see that we have added 30 individuals to our population. So now our new n here is equal to 130 individuals. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, g equals rn. Uh, logistic growth has a slightly more complicated um, equation to determine the growth rate of the population. And it adds a new variable. So we still have g, we still have r, we still have n, but now we introduce some more terms. We have k minus n divided by k. Okay, so this is our logistic growth rate uh, growth model. Um, okay, so our new variable here is k, and k, as we talked about before, is equal to the carrying capacity. Okay, so imagine two scenarios here. Um, we have uh, our equation for the growth rate of logistic growth. And um, when n is close to zero, when n is close to zero, then everything between the, uh, maybe I should give these colors, okay, I'm going to give this a purple color, and then I'm going to give this a green color, these parentheses. Um, when n is close to zero here, this n, then um, this is a very small term, right? And basically we have k divided by k. And when you divide uh, one variable by itself, then you get one. So this whole term, everything between the purple parentheses, when n is very small, is very close to one. So basically, the um, logistic growth, uh, growth rate equation um, is very similar to the exponential growth rate equation here, uh, when n is close to zero. So when n is close to zero, the purple parentheses term is close to one, and the growth rate of the population is very similar to exponential growth. Um, as n gets larger and larger and larger, As n approaches, oh, there's an h in there, as n approaches k, so as the population size gets closer and closer to the value of k, this whole term um, approaches zero. too big. And when this whole term approaches zero, then the growth rate also approaches zero. So you can see here, as the population size ap approaches the carrying capacity, the population levels off. It stops growing altogether. Um, okay, so part of the reason why I'm telling you this is um, we talk about the life history traits of certain organisms um, as comparing them to 
how they try to, I guess, maximize their uh, numbers on their surface. Um, okay, so there are a group of species that we call R selected. Generally, these species are small bodied, short lived, large number of offspring. Um, very uh, little amounts of parental investment in offspring. So the reason why we call these organisms our selected species is they're trying to maximize their growth rate by maximizing R. Their per capita rate of increase. Um, there's another group of organisms that we call K-selected. In general, K-selected species tend to be the opposite, large-bodied, long-lived, uh, slow to reproduce, few offspring, and a large parental investment in offspring. The reason that we call these organisms K-selected species is that they're more concerned, or their life history strategy, is to stay, their population stay near K, stay near the carrying capacity of the population. So they're not really, their growth rate is close to zero. They're not, their population size isn't growing very fast, but it's staying constant near K. So we're going to talk more about um, these two different life history strategies and uh, why uh, some organisms are choosing or their life history traits lead them towards more R-selected characteristics or more near K-selected characteristics. So that's all.